So what we're looking at today is a T770. We've got the Doosan D34 in it. This one's hard to start, and we notice that when it is running, we're kind of, it's just running really rough and a lot of black smoke. So let's go ahead and try to start it up and see what it does, see if we can even get it started. So yeah, so so no start. So we're, we're pretty sure that after the black smoke that we saw after it was running, that we are fighting a low rail pressure issue. And we're assuming that this is gonna be injectors. So we're just gonna do a video here on tearing down the 770 because this one does have the SCR that we have to get around and how we get to the injectors. We're gonna test them, see which ones are bad. Hopefully not all of them, but we'll find out. So we know we have low, low, low rail pressure, but, and usually that's because an injector is leaking by a lot of fuel. Now our fuel pump is, it's, it's high pressure, but it's low volume. So it doesn't take a lot of leakage to not be able to build rail pressure. So since I have to move the machine, or ideally I would like to, what we're gonna do is do trial and error here. We're gonna to try to isolate the one injector that's leaking real bad by capping it off. And I'll leave a little description for where I get these uh, fuel injector cap so we can just uh, we're going to cap off the rail so we're going to take the fuel line off for the number one injector and we're just going to start here i don't know that this is the one that's leaking because we got an scr over the top so i can't really get to my injectors easily to do a back leak test so this one we're just going to have to kind of do trial and error because you know this this machine will run on three cylinders hopefully i can get this line out of the way enough to get my cap on there. Okay, so the number one cylinder is capped off, so we're going to uh, try to fire it up, and if it does work, we're gonna do what we need to do real quick and shut it back down so it don't get too hot. So see, it did start pretty quick. So that, yeah, number one injector definitely has an issue. So we just wanted to get the machine to a better location. So this thing is running on three cylinders right now, but that's, like I said, that's, that's how we get them started when we got one injector that's leaking real bad. So once we get the SCR off, now we're gonna do a back leak on all four injectors and uh, see which one that we really need to change. Hopefully not all four, but the fact that it's running pretty good on three tells me that maybe just one or maybe two injectors are actually bad. So just for the sake of time, we're gonna time lapse pulling the SCR off. So I gotta get this top panel off and then pull the SCR. So what I do, some people pull the SCR mounting plate, which you can do it in either way, but I'm gonna pull the straps off of the SCR, pull the SCR off, then I'll pull the mounting plate. I don't know, it's just to each his own, I guess. That's just my preferable way to do it. Now that I've got the SCR out of the way, I mean, ideally I like to do a back leak test with my tubes. I put eighth inch clear tube on here, but I guess that's just the way it works when you work out of a shop and the truck, because I may have taken it out of my truck because I can't find it, but I've done this enough times where I can visually watch these, see how much fuel's coming out of them and see which ones are bad. So let's go ahead and turn the engine over. So we know one and two are shot, three and four actually look 
pretty good. That's about what I would want to see. I'm surprised it actually started up, but definitely these two were spraying so much fuel that um, that's the ones we're going to start with. We're just going to change one and two for right now. Then we'll run some more tests with the computer and see how she does. But see just a little bit. I mean, three looks really good. Number four is probably a little high, but I think it's going to be okay. All right, so we know that we're doing number one and two injectors. So I'm just going to pull our little PCB valve hose off. And I'm going to pull all the bolts out of this little injector hold down cover. Ideally, this would come off without removing all the injector lines, only the ones we want to do because we want to avoid taking the injector lines off uh, because these, these are really only supposed to be used one time. Once you torque them to spec, you want to replace them. But on this machine, like I said, most engines you can take it off, but since we got this SCR bracket over here, it kind of hits that, so I have to move the lines out of the way. And now we've got in, uh, access to our injectors. So using a six millimeter, hex bit or allen bit we are going to go ahead and remove these injector clamps now we just got to get the electrical off the injectors and they've just got a little locking tab that well on this one it's a little gray tab we just push it back and that gets the lock out of the way of our little spring clip and even when we get the lock out of the way sometimes these are a real booger to get off there And sometimes we can just pull the injectors out, but I just use a little pry bar or something just to uh, just kind of lift up on these injectors and they usually pop out no issue because these are kind of in an oil bath. So they just pop right up. So first thing I look for when we pull the injector out is this copper ring. We want to make sure that it does come out with the injector. Pull the number one out. So I pulled the number one out, see the copper washer fell back into the hole. So that's one thing to look out because I just talked to someone that pulled a machine apart that had two copper washers or two spacers on it, which brings this tip further up in the bore and you get an improper spray pattern. So always account for your, you know, crush washer, crush washer, fire ring, copper washer, spacer, whatever you want to call it. Just make sure you account for it. So I got that one out. What I did is, is I put a little grease around the injector, just put it back down in the hole, and it just kind of, that grease just kind of grabbed our little spacer and pulled it back out for us. So now I'm gonna get two new spacers, two new injectors, and get it put back together. So I've got my new injectors ready, and, and I do this one of two ways. Either I can drop this down in the bore and just look down in there with a the flashlight, you know, our, our copper washer or spacer, and just make sure that it fell in flat and it's over the bore. But we're going to do it the same way we took that other one out. I just put a little clean grease around it and actually holds it to the injector pretty good. And that'll let us uh, get it down in the bore here. And that little pop you heard is just our little O-ring right here going down in the bore so as soon as we get it close to the bottom that o-ring goes into the hole in the head okay and drop down that's how we know we're seated so now we just got to get our injector hold downs back on And then of course, using my Harbor Freight ratchet, we're gonna torque these to spec. 
click, click. Click, click. There, there is a torque spec on these, and I was actually surprised at how low that torque spec was because they're really tight to get off. But um, I'll see if I can't post that torque spec. I think it's 29, 30 pounds maybe. I'm not sure. But now that we got the injectors installed, now we can go ahead and put our injector cover back over. And let me see if I can try and wipe this dust up and away from the hole down here on the bottom wipe off all that excess oil and I'm trying to wipe that dirt kind of up and away to avoid it from falling down into the engine using kind of a clean part of my rag each time I do this And then we're just going to take a few minutes here, get all our lines hooked back up, our electrical, and then we'll just get to programming. So after we replace, replace the injectors, we have to reprogram them using our laptop. And what we do is there's a, on top of these injectors, you'll notice when you install them that there is a 20 digit alphanumeric um, number on there. That's it's the code for the injector. When they build these injectors, they all have their own unique firing and firing order, I guess, or, or spray patterns or whatever the case may be, and they program the injector based off that information so we can tell the computer or the ECM where to start. So the reason that's important is because the ECM constantly learns what each injector's firing order is. We call it minimum drive pulse, and it uses accelerometers or knock sensors, um, probably better known as in the cylinder to know you know when it's detonating and the speed there's so many calculations that goes along to when the ecu actually fires how fast and how many times it fires these injectors for optimal you know combustion performance or engine performance basically so as it constantly learns it it, it has stored in there um basically what it learned off the old injector so if we just fired up with new injectors in there now it's telling these new injectors, let's fire like them old ones that were probably wore out, not working good. So you're not getting the right combustion in here. And it would take it some time for the ECU to catch up and learn that, okay, these injectors are firing differently. So let's just keep, you know, making minute changes until we get it firing right. But in the meantime, until it actually gets them back to where they need to be, we need to reset them. Or I guess while it's trying to do that, it could cause engine damage because it's not firing right, putting too much fuel, not enough fuel, whatever the case may be. So it's best that we reset these back to zero. And that's why we program the injectors. So we just finished putting the machine back together. We got all the injectors programmed and it just, it started up really good and it runs really good. I run some injector tests just to make sure everything was even because we were a little concerned about that number three and four, but they tested out perfect. But since we had bad injectors, a lot of smoke going to that SCR, what we're doing now is we are, we're forcing what we call a desox, or some people might call it a regen, but on an SCR, this is a desulfurnization type process. So it works like a regen, it revs really high, gets really hot, burns out, cleans out that SCR, DOC area. And then once we get all that done, we'll run a couple more tests and we should be good to go on this machine. So that wasn't too bad of a fix. Any questions on that, let us know. Thanks for watching.